Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about experimental design. As usual, up above, there'll be a link to a playlist all about regression, and down below, there'll be a PDF version of these slides. There'll be two videos in this series about experimental design. The first video, we'll be talking about a completely randomized design, or CRD, and the next one will be about a random complete block design, or RCBD. Now, there are two aspects of randomness when thinking about data, and we've already talked about one of these earlier on in our uh, video series when we were talking about statistical inference, and when you want to make an inference about some population. And we said in order to have statistical support for that statement about the population, you must have a random sample from that population. Without a random sample from that population, we can't make statistically valid statements about that population. But if we have a random sample, then we can. We're going to talk now in this design aspect about a second aspect of randomness. And in particular, we're going to be interested in making a causal statement. The causal statement is about a explanatory variable affecting a response variable. And in order to make that causal statement, you will need to randomly assign levels of the explanatory variable to the experimental units under study. The experimental units just being those observations where you are collecting data. So if you can randomly assign these explanatory variable levels, then we will have a causal statement. Typically in those scenarios, the explanatory variables are called treatments. So if you can randomly assign the treatments, then you can make a causal statement about that treatment's effect on the response. Now, we will distinguish between these two situations. If you can make a random assignment, then we call it a randomized experiment. If you cannot make a random assignment of those treatment levels to the experimental units, then we call it an observational study. And so it's really important, whenever you see any data that's out there, or any study, if you read about it, you can think about these two questions. The questions are, are, do you have a random sample from the population? And do you have a random assignment of the treatment? Okay, and depending on your answer to those two questions, you will end up in one of these four categories. All right? if the sample you have is random, then you can make an inference to the population. If it's not a random sample, then you cannot make a, sta a statistically valid statement to that population. If the treatment was randomly assigned, then you can have a causal statement, that is, you can make a cause and effect claim. If the uh, treatment was not randomly assigned, then you have an observational study, and you cannot make a statistically valid cause and effect statement. Okay, so it's very useful to think about every study you see and which of these four bins it falls into. All right. So I'm going to talk throughout this video and the next video about a particular experiment. There's going to be a link at the bottom of this uh, slide, and I'll probably put it in the description down below, uh, to an experiment that I thought was pretty unique. Somebody, a woodworker, decided to test different wood glues. And so we're, as a starting point, we're just going to consider two different types of wood glues, a gorilla and tight bond. And this individual went and made what are called, apparently, scarf joints. I'm not a woodworker, so I don't know about this. Uh, but it looks like it was just cut at, say, a 45 degree angle, uh, and then glued it together. And it, then they took and uh, put some weight on the end of those pieces of lumber, and they recorded how much weight is needed for that joint to break. All right? And so, let's see, there's a lot of details that are on the website that you can see down below here, uh, but if you want more detail, go for it there. All right, but that's basically the structure of the experiment. And now, suppose that I have eight pieces of wood lying around, and I might go and I number those pieces one to eight, and then I'm going to randomly assign whether gorilla or tight bond is used on each of those pieces of wood. Uh, once I do that randomization, well, I'm going to do the randomization in such a way that I ensure that there are four of those eight are gorilla and four of those eight are tight bond. So as an example, this is what I might have seen. You can see here, uh, there are various ways to do this randomization. I tend to do it using the sample function in R. If you are in Excel, you could do it using random uniform numbers. Uh, in this example, you could have taken an eight-sided die and just rolled it until you got four unique numbers. And suppose you did that, 
and what you found, and you said ahead of time that those first four get gorilla, then imagine that you got the numbers one, three, six, and eight. So gorilla are those four pieces of wood, and the remainder are type bond. If this is the structure of your experiment, this is called a completely randomized design. So we've just randomly assigned that glue, which is the treatment in this case, to the experimental units, those eight pieces of wood. Um, if all of the treatments have the same number of replicates, then the design is balanced. And you can see in these data, we have four gorilla, and we have four type bond, so it is a balanced design. Uh, because all of those treatment combinations are repeated, the design is called replicated. And so we might say this is a completely random design with replication. Okay, the balanced is typically implied. Um, if it weren't, then we would say, if it were not balanced, then we would say it's an unbalanced. Okay. All right, so this is an example of what these data might have looked like. And so we can see very quickly that it looks like Gorilla does not provide as much support as the tight bond in terms of the weight uh, that's put on these pieces of wood before their break. Um, if we fit a regression model, the regression model might look like this. Uh, so we're going to introduce notation here for two variables. We're going to have P subscript W as the pounds needed to break wood piece W. TW is going to be an indicator that it was tight bond. Remember that we have categorical variables. We need to uh, assign one of them as the reference level, in this case it was gorilla, and include dummy variables for all the other explanatory variables, all the other levels of that categorical variable. So here all we need is that dummy variable for type bond. And now our model might look like this, so the pounds are normally distributed, they're independent, uh, with a mean that depends on the whether it was type bond or not, uh, and a common variance sigma squared. Uh, in this analysis, the important parameter here is beta 1, because that's going to provide us the difference in strength between these two glue types. All right, so um, we're going to fit a model. We're going to look at some uh, model diagnostics to make sure that it's a reasonable model. With only eight observations, it's going to be pretty difficult to see uh, glaring deviations from our model assumptions. These look fine, so we'll move forward. Um, we can obtain our statistics using that model. So we have um, just parameter estimates, we have an R squared value, we have uh, confidence and credible intervals of those parameter estimates, and then finally we're using the EM means package in R to get estimated mean strength or mean weight needed to break those different uh, joints. All right, now what you probably want to do here at the end is to write up a paragraph for a manuscript that describes the results of this experiment, and it might look something like this. You might say a randomized experiment, that tells the individual who's reading it that you did a randomization, was designed to evaluate the effectiveness of a gorilla and type on in preventing failures in scarf joint cuts at a 20 degree angle uh, through one by two spruce with four replicates of each glued type. Right, that gives a nice succinct understanding of what was going on in this experiment. Uh, according to the analysis, the mean break weight was 244 with a 95% confidence and credible interval of 228 to 259 for Gorilla and 297 with an uncertainty interval of 281 to 312 for Type Bond. That very succinctly gives somebody who's reading your study an understanding of how strong these joints are when using type bond and when using gorilla. Now, the real interesting question here is what is the difference between type bond and gorilla? So you probably want to address that. So type bond glue caused, and notice the causal statement here, it's not just associated. Because you randomly assign the treatment, you can make a causal claim. So type bond caused an increase in break weight of 53 pounds with an uncertainty interval between 31 and 75 compared to Gorilla Glue. So type on was an improvement over Gorilla Glue. And finally, this difference accounted for 85% of the variability in break weight. All right, so a nice succinct paragraph representation or uh, summarization of the analysis that you did. All right, so that was our video on a completely randomized design. The next video will be on a randomized block design. Hope to catch you there.